Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. I have my typical dev setup here and there'll be a card up in the uh, top corner there uh, with a video on how to get the same dev setup working for you. Um, today, let's talk about JavaScript timers. And the most common way or the most known way to deal with timing in JavaScript is set timeout. And it's a very simple function here. It's a, a function you call and you pass it this uh, this callback here, this this function, and after a given amount of milliseconds, such as a thousand here, which is uh, one second, it's going to call this. So say I'm called after one second. Um, so then when we refresh the page, you'll see that it will log this after exactly one second. Uh, and another common one, uh, or frequently used one, um, is set interval. And set interval works just like set timeout, except the difference here is that instead of just calling it once and disappearing forever, it's going to be called every one second. It's going to log out. It's going to call this function here um, at every one second and just continue on forever here. So as you can see here, it's going to say every one second, two, three, four, and so on and so forth uh, forever. Now, both set interval and set timeout will return a um, a variable here, and this is sort of an ID that represents this specific instance of set interval here. And it's mostly useful if you want to uh, say uh, cancel. The interval if, if you if you want it to stop after a certain amount so we're going to add a count here and then we're going to say okay we're going to call this uh until the count is uh let's say greater than five we want to call this uh this we want to call this function five times and then we're going to call clear interval uh it's clear timeout if you're using timeout and we're going to supply it the uh the id the, or this variable here that we have uh, returned from set interval here and so Basically, then uh, we could just enter increment uh, count here. And so it's going to call this uh, count function every every second until the count is greater than five. And then it's going to clear it and it won't count it anymore. And so as you can see here, it counts all the way up till five until it gets to the sixth one. And then it'll clear it and it won't call it anymore. So now maybe we want to uh, call a function at an interval. Um, something uh, like let's go ahead and comment this out here um, so maybe maybe we have like a live camera feed of, of some bear um, out on the internet and every second we want to pull and see and get that bear and say okay you know do we have a new bear um, and, and we just want to check for that new bear every every second uh, from the server and so we can call this uh, this made up function here get bear and let's let's just make this let's write this function here. So we'll say get bear, and it'll take a callback here to let us know when it's it's got the bear. And just for demo purposes, what it's going to do is uh, anywhere between uh, three seconds and zero seconds. We'll say math random. Um, so math random will give us a number between uh, zero and one, and we're going to times that by three thousand uh, for milliseconds. So basically, anywhere between zero and three seconds, uh, this function is going to be called here. And so we'll console log out that we got a bear here, and then we'll call this callback here. And so we'll just apply our just a, a, a blank callback here. So what this is doing is that. Every second, we're gonna pull the server. You know, let's let's just pretend this is this is going out to a server. This is some network request going out to the server. So every second, we're gonna say, okay, do we got a do we, do we got a new bear? Do we got a new bear? Um, and so what's gonna happen here is it's going to go out to the server, and the server can return back anywhere between zero and three seconds. But we're checking every second. Um, and that's you know that's just wasteful because we only want to check. Um, every time the bear has returned here, uh, but still every one second. So instead of using uh, set interval here, um, instead what we can do is we can write our own function here called pull. Now pull will call get bear just the same as our set interval call down below, uh, except one once uh, get bear is done and um, and we're ready and you know the the responses came uh, then at this point we call uh, set timeout 
and we supply uh, the name here of our function itself. Uh, so, you know, in, in JavaScript, if you give a function a name, that name is also available as is if, if you uh, initiated it such, you know, as such. Um, so what we can do here is we can say, okay, now that we have gotten a response from the server, um, we can call uh, the, our poll uh, function here exactly one second later. And this is a much more uh, efficient way to, uh, to handle this kind of situation uh, where we're polling, but we only poll as soon as we need to. So this won't re respond every second, uh, but it will respond anywhere between uh, zero to, um, to three seconds and exactly one second later. Oh, and then lastly, we need to make sure we call it the first time around. Otherwise, it won't start. So we'll call poll now, and then now once we refresh the page, it will call it. So we say we got a bear, and then once the response comes back, we know we can wait exactly one second later, and then we try it again and again and again. And now we have a, a nice little polling function that is, is less wasteful. Okay, all of that's great, but likely if you're calling a function at a given interval, uh, you're probably animating something as that's uh, a common thing to do when when calling something at a given interval and so let's create something to animate here so we're going to say new image uh, and then we'll say bear source equals this bear.jpg image i have here on my server and we'll say bear style position uh position equals absolute and so we're just going to make an absolute so we can make it do things and then let's add it to the document body Say in document body append child and let's append this this bare uh, image as you see here to our page and so as you can see this bear he he looks like he has some moves so uh, you know we want to make him um, we want to make him dance and so to do that what we can do is let's just create a variable here called delta and then we'll say uh, set interval not set timeout set interval. Um, at a given interval, we want to make him uh, sway back and forth. And so let's just do 100 milliseconds because we want it to happen a little bit faster. And we'll say bear style and then the left uh, position of it. We'll say mass sign. And a mass sign is basically, we're just going to give it a number here. And what it's going to do is it's going to return a number between uh, negative 1 and 1 um, based on uh, where in uh, a circle that we're we're going back and forth on. And so this delta here, uh, we're gonna feed it the delta here. And then uh, of course we wanna use pixels uh, when, that we're feeding here. So we'll say, you know, like one pixel, two pixel, three pixel, and so forth. And so the delta here, we can just simply do uh, plus one and, and continually increment this delta and feed it to the sine wave here um, to, to make our bear uh, move back and forth. And as so you can see here, our, our bear is moving, uh, you know, between negative one and one. And so what we want to do is we want to give maybe a variable here called amount. Um, and let's set it to 50. And then we'll times the amount. So we want it to move instead of between negative one and one, we want it to move between negative 50 and 50. And so now when we save here, uh, you see our bear moves a bit more. So we got a pretty good animation here, but if you noticed, it's a little choppy uh, when he's moving. Um, it's, it's not as smooth as we had hoped. And also, it's going to get a lot worse if the user's computer is, is a lot slower or if it's, if it's doing a lot of processing in the background. And it's important to know that set interval uh, works based off of the computer's clock. Uh, it, if, if the browser is stalling or it's not able to, to paint the, the view as quick as you, as you think, it's just going to keep firing and firing. It does not care that uh, that it, it's it, the browser is stalling. It says every every hundred milliseconds I'm going to fire no matter what, and so that's going to create a choppy animation here. So what we want to do is we want to use something that isn't based off of the the the, the clock. It does not based off of time itself, uh, and so request animation frame to the rescue. Um, so to do that, we're going to replace our set interval with a draw uh, function that we've uh, created here. And this function is going to be called just the same, but instead of calling it uh, every 100 milliseconds here, uh, instead what we're going to do is we're going to create this function and we're going to call it the first time around, which is going to call it, the, the you know, the, the, it's going to start us off here. And then we're going to say, okay, uh, request animation uh, frame here. 
uh, call it again. And so this is going to create a, a basically an infinite loop here um, that is going to uh, call our, our, um, our draw function. It's the first time around, we're calling it ourselves here, which is going to animate our bear here and increment, increment our delta here. And then it's going to call request animation frame as soon as it's available to paint again. So as soon as we, we are able to do a new thing. And so what this is going to do, it's going to create a super fast animation uh, because request animation frame, of course, gets called at the, the frame rate that you're able to go at. So we can just adjust this animation, slow it down by changing the delta here from 1 to 0.1. And that will create a much smoother and slower animation. And he's grooving. He's dancing. This is... This is a much smoother dancing bear. So I hope this has helped you learn about JavaScript timers. And if it has, then uh, please share the video and help others learn about JavaScript timers. And if you want to see more videos, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.